In this video, I'll reinstall the electronics into the table, connect all the motors, and test the movement. You can see that the electronics are all now back in the table where they were originally installed. This could have been easily wired up in place, but for clarity for the previous video, I chose to disassemble. I'll start by installing the e-stop switch finisher plate. Hold the e-stop body in the back of the hole and insert the button assembly through the front. A simple twist snaps these two pieces together. Now extend the screws on the side of the e-stop body. This will press against the back of the steel and tighten the button assembly against the front face. Now we can permanently reinstall the electronics covers. Here I will need to drill out the holes in the cable carrier that will attach to the gantry using the insert nuts. Snap the modified end onto the carrier with the mounting face towards the bow of the carrier. Snap the other end with the mounting face pointing in the other direction. With the carrier laying on the gantry, attach the carrier to the top of the carrier bracket. You should have four T-nuts in the top of the gantry. The first two T-nuts are for the middle of the carrier, and the other two are for the end bracket. Tighten these down, leaving about six inches of space between the edge of the gantry and the bracket. Now fasten the center of the carrier. Using the two T-nuts, capture two opposing rungs of the carrier and tighten. About half of the carrier ever moves, so this helps keep it tight against the top of the gantry. Make sure there's enough slack in the carrier. The longest cable is for the Z-axis. The next longest is for the X-axis, 
and the two short ones are for the Y-axis motors. Fish the longest cable through the carrier and connect to the Z-axis motor. Then connect the X-axis motor. Connect the other two motors and label them for easy reference. Connect the motor cables to the corresponding ports on the G540. The Y-axis cable will connect to the Y-axis port while the other one connects to the A-axis port. Connect the power cord to the power receptacle on the front of the machine. Now the motors are all connected and the printer cable is connected to the printer port on the computer. The computer shown here is already set up to work with the machine. I'll first test the motors at 200 inches per minute to make sure everything works and goes in the correct direction. Now let's go a little bit faster. This is at 300 inches per minute. Now the machine is assembled and fully operational. Thanks for watching. Now it's time to make something.